Hello YouTube, in this hypertrophy series I'm going to talk about the optimal number of sets you should be doing for muscle growth. And this is a topic that is not necessarily new but has seen a resurgence because in the past people focused more on the rep range and you had the entire talk about the 8 to 12 being the best rep range for hypertrophy. And we've moved away from that, people now realize that low rep ranges can be very good for progression and that as long as you're intense enough, you're going to see results. Issue is, of course, when a myth disappears, another one is there to replace it. And you now have people who claim that they are able to give you the exact number of sets you need to be doing as a natural to grow. And I've heard that number range from 9 to 12 to 15 to 20. Issue is, all of these are irrelevant because in reality, they ignore too many parameters. You cannot say that 20 sets is the best number simply because a set has other parameters that come into play. Programming cannot just be taken individually. Within a set exists the number of reps you're going to do for each set, the intensity of each set, the frequency, how you're going to actually put those sets together in the week. Are you going to do 20 sets in one day? Are you going to do four sets for each day? If you train four or five times, what does that look like? All of these are very important because in reality, that's what makes the set. The number of sets is completely irrelevant. And I've never heard anyone actually talk about that. Meaning that it's a number given to people who for the most part are novices and it shows the complete lack of understanding that a lot of the people that give advice on this platform have about programming. So in this video, I sort of want to go around that issue and try to give you the pointers that you need to think about when you're going to decide the number of sets you're going to do. First off, my mindset is do as little as possible to get as much as possible. Meaning that if you can get away with a minimal amount of sets, well, progression still occurs and you stay injury free, do it. You're going to at some point be forced to have a lot more sets in your training. For as long as you can get away with, try to do a minimal amount of work. So for example, if you start training a body part, start with three sets a week. Yeah, it's slow. Yeah, it's not that much volume, but you'll see results from that. And when it's time to jump up to four or five or six, that's when you'll start thinking about this. But first, don't do too much because it's the best way to, one, burn out and not see any results, and two, develop a poor relationship with your set selection because your program is a puzzle and it's constituted of a lot of things and the set selection is one of them. You will see that certain body parts are going to naturally uh, acquire and accumulate more sets by default and that's going to just be a byproduct you're not going to really have to force it and therefore applying a static number of sets doesn't really work you can't do that for your body parts and the worst part is that there's never any flexibility in the discussion i never hear people say okay for the legs do 20 sets and then for the forearms do 12 it's always one number the body parts have different sizes different recovery abilities you can't think like this. You have to have more of an applied mind. You have to look at the body and your body and decide what is going to work for what muscle group. So around that topic also, keep in mind that the way you're going to program and the weight selection you're going to decide on is going to also modify the set scheme. And that's the reason why I personally am a big uh, proponent of the evolving set scheme is because it allows you to progress because you don't always stay at the same amount of sets. And that's the big issue I have also with the discussion around the topic is I never hear anyone talk about that. The fact that, yes, rep ranges evolve and a lot of people have evolving rep ranges in their program. They do a 6 to 10 and 8 to 12. But you rarely see that for the sets. And yet it might be even better than for the reps, meaning that you will find that when you go from 1 to 3 sets, there's a big variation in volume, yes, but there's also a big variation in intensity because when you do your one set, you can push the bill much more and that's what's going to allow you to put weight on the bar over time. So it's something to keep in mind. You're not going to always have your weekly training with the same amount of sets for six months. Or if you do, I'm sorry to say that, but you're limiting yourself because it's too rigid. You can't think about programming like this. 
And I understand why this question arises in the first place. It's because people want certainty. They want to be told, do this amount of reps for this amount of sets, X times a week and you'll get jacked. Well, guess what? That might work when you're a novice because anything works when you're a novice. But once you graduate from that, you're going to have to take risks. And risks involve a certain degree of uncertainty. So that is something you're going to have to embrace. But just to finish on the entire idiocy of the 20 sets a week is great. That also doesn't take into account indiv uh, individual uh, inclinations in a sense because we're all different i could be doing 20 sets and it's going to destroy you completely number two is going to be the level of the trainee because someone who is able to handle 20 sets might graduate from that they might need more in the future and so the entire thing around being able to just cite a number really doesn't work and it also is the issue that this also propagates the idea that there is a cap. Like, oh, if you hit 20 sets, then you'll never be able to do more, so don't even think about it. In a sense, it's correct, but not for the reasons those people promote. It's correct because the more sets you have in your program, the more freedom you have to manipulate the intensity of these sets. And so in reality, once you have enough options, you stop having to add additional sets because they take care of themselves. You can just modify the rep range for more volume, lower it if you want less, etc., etc. So the idea behind it shouldn't really be that you're going to hit a hard limit in the number of sets. It's that you're going to hit a hard limit on the usefulness of having more sets. Because, and that's a big problem that I see a lot of people doing, the more sets you add to the training, the more volume, of course, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good volume. For example, if you do three sets of... 6 to 10, and you add a fourth one, that's great because it's still in line. It's still a fourth set with a relevant weight. But what if you had a fifth one, then a sixth, then a seventh? The more sets you had, the more sandbagging you do, because the more times you retake a rep range that, for the most part, if you're able to repeat so many times, means it's not challenging you. So the weight selection is not there, and now you're doing junk volume. And I know that for the people who follow the hypertrophy series, you've integrated that idea now, but understand that a lot of people, when they're just given the information that they're supposed to do X amount of sets, they're not going to know how to handle that because you need to understand a lot of things to be able to decide, okay, three sets here, two sets there, that makes sense. A lot of people will just bunch them together and they're going to reverse engineer it. So instead of thinking, okay, I want my sets to be productive. How do I do that? They'll just think I need to get the sets done how, however I have to do it. So instead of thinking I want that weight for that amount of reps for that amount of set, which is the proper way, they'll say I want that amount of set for that amount of reps. So what weight do I use? And that's the reverse engineering I talk about where they're going to end up with a weight that is completely relevant. The rep range and the weight sort of decide each other and then the sets come in and the sets are going to be predetermined pretty much because you're going to see what you're able to do with your muscular endurance and that's why it's so important to experiment yourself and to base the number of sets off of your training uh, through time you will not be able to just apply a random number because it's not correlated to anything that you've done or will be doing in the gym so be very careful with the people who tell you that they have the magic formula. They don't. They are completely missing the intensity portion, the volume portion, the frequency portion, and they're just giving you an empty husk that means absolutely nothing. So I'm going to leave you with that for this hypertrophy series. I'm going to continue the uh, discussions about the optimal rep range, set, set selection, optimal measures of muscle growth, etc., because... There's always things to debunk, and as I debunk them, I replace them with something that is actually valuable and will help you in your training. So I hope you pay attention, because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.